Good morning, everybody. I just thought I would do another update on my Christmas stocking and make this my second week of Christmas video. I'm really, really enjoying the toku wool or taku wool from Finland. It's just made knitting the stocking so fabulous. And I made a few modifications to this pattern that I shared in my last video, and I thought I would talk about those. And I thought I would talk about some ideas for how to design your own stocking using this stocking as a template and modifying some of the elements to it. So one thing I wanted to share right away is that I, my gauge shifted. Um, I started here, and then you can see that my stocking definitely got wider, and I seem to do that as a knitter. I, I'm sure that I get more relaxed and then all of a sudden, look what happens, it just grew into a wider shape. So I definitely did not stay on gauge here. But I think I can deal with that in the end by doing some blocking, by pulling these sections out a bit, possibly. And I, when I started thinking about blocking, I got really worried because I was terrified that the red might bleed into the white and turn the white pink. So I thought what I could do is a small test and take some of the red and some of the white and probably some of the green or do the red and the white and then the green and the white in different mini soak baths and see how much bleeding occurs and then after rinsing see if bleeding if the if there is any bleeding if it washes completely out of the white if it if there if there's a non issue from that test and I thought what I would do was um, go ahead and just completely give this a really nice soak because I'm hoping that it will soften up a bit. And if that does, if that test it doesn't work, and I'm noticing bleeding and it it seems a little uh, iffy, then I thought I would just do the Arnie and Carlos method, which would be to just cover this in a, a very very damp. Uh, dish towel and then steam uh, steam it with an iron not like this but up and down and then see what I can do to just kind of stretch it a bit and get it into one even shape but it's not too bad but for my mind in my eye it's noticeable and then the other thing I wanted to mention is that I did some experimentation I mentioned in my last video that these two colors go from thick to thin consistently so I don't know if the camera will pick this up but it can get real skinny and then get um, much thicker which is fine because I love the fact that this is has a homespun feel to it and they're consistently going from thick to thin so it gives you in my, my mind I feel like I'm getting the same gauge when I work with these two together however when I use the white that's where things really change and so it's a non-issue when the white is the pattern color but when the white is the background color that will really uh, change the gauge quite a bit on the stocking and I can see once I shift it to white as the background color then this, it seems like I didn't measure it to get the exact gauge but the background color is just making this wider at this point. It, the stocking start, you can visually just see it started growing out. So one way to correct for that would be to just make a conscious effort to hold the background color with a much tighter tension if you want to use a yarn that you might receive that tends to be slightly thicker than the other yarns in your in your batch or just avoid using that yarn as the background color altogether. So, because I have arthritis in my hands, I just chose to just avoid using this as the background color. So that was cool. I learned a lot from that. So moving on, talking about modifications. In this stocking, the pattern calls for this to be the cuff. So technically this section should be the cuff. And then I should have been knitting about this much in stockinette knitting to go underneath of that and then the cuff would flip over and I I just didn't have time to do all that and I didn't see the need to have a cuff and so I just thought just turn the cuff into the stocking so 
this it turned out really well. That's what I did. I just started the stocking with the cuff and didn't do the stockinette underneath and then just kept knitting. And the way to do that is to just flip your chart upside down so that the top shows that the top of the pattern is uh, showing up in the right uh, order. And that because this section was all done in purl stitches, every two, there's two rows of purl and then one row of stockinette, it's super thick and sturdy. So I think it makes a good uh, edge to the top of the stocking for hanging like this. So that was super cool. Um, a couple of, so sorry, I'm going to backtrack a little bit on the modifications, go back to the yarn. So I was saying in my earlier video that the needle I was using was too tight and the uh, white color, because it was thicker, was starting to show through here um, beneath the red. And so I switched to from a 2.5 millimeter needle to a 2.75 millimeter needle and that took the problem away. It made my stocking about an inch wider. So I can show you the original stocking here and it did make the stocking about three quarters of an inch wider in width when it's folded like this. And um, so, the, so that was one difference. And the other difference was that because this fa knitted fabric is much more denser because it was knit on a smaller needle, um, I would imagine that it's more sturdier so that when you put presents in and if it's somehow there's presents that are hanging up, it's not going to stretch out as easily. There's like no drape in this at all. So I think my stocking is going to end up being more decorative. It could, it, it's not as dense and so it won't be as sturdy. There's a lot more drape to it and it might not be able to hold gifts and hang at the same time like this one could. But I'm totally fine with that because again I have this arthritis issue so um, I'd rather have a more enjoyable knitting experience than rather try to get everything super dense. Um, so because I knit with a larger needle, I had to make some modifications to the foot because I would end up with a foot that would be way too big uh, and out of proportion to the size of the leg of the stocking. And that is a issue that I noticed on Ravelry. I was studying all the stockings, seeing if there was another pattern I wanted to try. And, it, and I know that my Aunt Mary, who made me this stocking I showed her in my video, um, we received many, many stockings over the years, and <laughs> some had feet that were really tiny and legs that were really big, and they ended up making me feel like they were Dr. Seuss uh, stockings, and they were absolutely adorable and charming and warm and loving, and we just loved every stocking that came into the family, so um, I also think that's very endearing and very charming and very lovely and very sweet, and I don't think perfection is the goal here. Um, the more homemade it looks, the more I'm loving it feels to me. But I am I, I am trying to make an effort to make the, the foot in a good proportion to the leg. And if it doesn't turn out that way, I'm not going to be hard on myself. So, I, um, so with that in mind, I'll tell you what the modifications were that I'm trying to make to the foot of the stocking. Um, the original pattern called for a pattern, a color pattern on the heel. And I was really unhappy. Uh, maybe it was my fault for how these are the flap. Uh, this is the flap, and um, you uh, just knit the flap stitches on a separate needle, and then the rest of the stitches here are held on another needle. And it just felt like um, once the flap stitches are done, and you start to move into the gusset stitches here. It just doesn't lay nicely. It's just um, got a lot of uh, problems here. And granted, it, it's not been blocked, and I might not have done a good job picking up the, the stitches and adding uh, to the, the, the heel flap. So it, that could have all been a technical error on my point, but I just thought, you know what, I'm not really happy with this. And so I decided to do something slightly different. I chose to go with a different yarn for the heel flap stitches. And I had some 
a couple of choices at home. I had this eye sugar too. Uh, it's a alpaca finger, light fingering, and then I had this holst garn. It's 50% lamb's wool and 45% cotton, and I bought this to see about maybe it would be a good choice for summer knitting. So I had this in the house to test, and I and I kind of thought you know I think this alpaca yarn for the stocking was the best choice. So I just did the heel stitches in this color, hoping that this off-white would be close to the off-white from the toka wool. So it has a little bit of a halo, which is kind of special for stocking, because it reminded me of the Santa's, the Santa's beard that was all done in this stocking with Angora yarns. I love that. And um, so the heel has a bit of a drape to it now so that it doesn't have that weird edge now, which made me feel a lot happier. The one thing I worried about was that when I started picking up the toka wool off of this finer weight yarn, I might have some issues, and it does kind of look like this area here wasn't knit in a tight enough gauge, and I think I accidentally used the wrong needle size, and when I discovered that, I switched to about right here, and all of a sudden the knitting looks like it's at a better gauge. So uh, rather than t taking it back, I, I don't want to start over. I was like, okay, I'll just probably fiddle with that with on the blocking end of things because I really want to get this done before Christmas. And then because I knew that I wasn't going to use the smaller needles called for in the pattern, she wanted, well, she called for using a, a two millimeter which I believe is a US zero for the foot. And I remembered when I did my foot with that, it just, it gave a nice, knit, dense, knitted fabric. And I just, I love this color of green. But, but um, it was just, it was taking me so long to knit. And so again, I just thought, well, let me see what I can do to keep knitting with this 2.5 millimeter and see if I can get this foot done faster. So I did that, and what I'm, because I'm using the larger needle, again, I'm gonna have more drape in the fabric, and it is slightly see-through, but it probably won't be noticeable once the two sides lay together. And, um, but my problem, I knew I was gonna have this problem. I, the foot would be way too big, because I'm using a needle that's too big, um, bigger than that called from the pattern, but it's easier to knit. So the way I'm compensating for that is I'm doing a lot more decreases at the gusset. So the gusset is just a row or a column of uh, knit one, knit two together, stitches every other row for, and you repeat that seven times, and then you end up with 120 stitches. So I'm gonna keep decreasing at the gusset um, because I know that I need to get the circumference of this foot to be much smaller so that it will be uh, approximating um, what the pattern had called for. And when you look at the finished pattern, the foot has a nice uh, size and it's in proportion to the leg. So it's not, so in some stockings you see the foot is much bigger than the leg and vice versa. I was really kind of hoping to get them to be in proportion to one another. So one thing I thought of was I could take all my stitches off and just put it on a spear thread at this point and kind of see does it look like the foot is kind of working out to be in proportion to the leg because from this point forward you just knit for five inches now as for the foot. And I could do that, or the other th thing I thought of was is to look at the gauge that I got using the 2.5 millimeter with the color work, and then kind of see um, that, use that as a reference point to determine um, what gauge I would need here to keep the foot and the leg uh, in, in the right proportions and consistent with the pattern. And I think I'll just put it on some spare thread and kind of take a look and see how is it looking size-wise. Um, 
So I'm going to do that next. And then the final thing I wanted to mention is that I, in terms of modifications, if I use this pattern again, I definitely think I would redo the gusset area. I like that I'm not a sock knitter, but I've noticed with a lot of hand knit socks that the gusset has a V shape. And I think they're, sorry about my hands, they're really, they, they've gone through an intensive healing process from a burn I had um, on Thanksgiving morning from a tea kettle. So I like the way the gusset stitches are in socks that I've seen where it has a V shape. And it seems like there are decreased stitches that kind of uh, start here and here and then they kind of meet up at a point, so there's a triangle. I think that would look nicer and help the stocking have a better shape because if I had just kept going with this stocking, even with blocking, it's hard for me to see how the shaping was going to lead to this um, being able to look like a sock. It was just going to be some area of this thing was going to have to fold in somehow in order to uh, look like a sock. Probably it looks like this section here. Um, and maybe my gauge was off, so I, I shouldn't judge because I didn't uh, do this. I, I'd use the required needle up to about right here, and then I started shifting. So that could be why there's a lot of excess knitted fabric here. But I was just thinking purely from an aesthetic point of view, um, I kind of like the idea of having a V-shaped gusset right here rather than just this column of uh, decreased stitches here, and I think that would be super cool. So what I was thinking, this whole project inspired me a lot to actually knit a pair of stockings, uh, sorry, socks, and kind of study gussets and how they're formed. And I did a little video review of this sock book from Norway, and I think I'll spend my holidays really studying that book and studying gussets and seeing if I can modify this pattern and give this stocking a different gusset and maybe try it again sometime next year or maybe next Christmas. So um, to, after I get done with the foot, I'm going to use the same white yarn to do the toe and then see if I can find some little um, jingle bells to put on the end of the toe like my aunt had done for me. Um, I think I had some of these at one point in my stash and um, if I still have some I'll definitely do that. And um, final thoughts for the day. I, I think that this Christmas pattern is something that could be modified and used for any pattern that you would like to put into the stocking as long as the number of stitches in the pattern repeat fit into the total circumference for the desired size that you'd like to have. And because I am knitting this with a bigger needle and a looser gauge, that means I maybe have a little bit more options uh, for picking different pattern repeats. And I like the Scandinavian stockings that have the reindeers and things that kind of are um, from nature, like, um, you know, they're just something that is more evocative of um, winter woodland um, kind of themes and um, instead of these abstract motifs. And I think that would be really fun um, because we just lost our little bunny. I was thinking I would really love to knit a stocking with little bunnies in it and maybe knit the bunnies with some mohair yarn or something like that. And I think that would be really sweet. I, I know that there are some moms that knit stockings and sell them on Etsy, and I, I really admire that they do that, and it, this, this whole project inspired me to want to do that, because I'm getting really tired of knitting hats, and not that I want to make things to sell things, but just the whole idea of giving this to a small child and knowing how much pleasure that gives children at Christmas, just at least I know it did for me when I grew up. And it's so nice to think about keeping that tradition going for other moms who might not be able to have the time to do this. Um, so I, I, I definitely see myself exploring Christmas stocking knitting. It just, it's the thing that made me want to learn how to knit in the first place. And um, it's just the one 
thing that I kind of associate with so much love at Christmas time. So anyways, I, I think it would be something anybody could do is just find the, figure out what size you want the circumference to be and figure out what the gauge is for the yarn that you want to use with the needle that makes that yarn knit up nicely in color work giving you the density that you're looking for and then figuring out um, wh with that gauge what your total number of stitches should be uh, in the round and then figuring out what pattern repeats can fit into that circumference so it may be a 24 stitch pattern repeat, it might be a 36 stitch pattern repeat, it might be something as simple as 2 or 5 and just chart it all out and then Knitting it from here to here is super, super simple. I think it would be the equivalent of knitting about two um, hats for the body. And then when you do the, the heel flap and the foot, it's just a matter of um, determining how you want your heel uh, to look with pattern stitches or plain knitting. And then deciding what gusset type of gusset you want. And then finishing up with the foot and doing some fun things at the toe I think would kind of give you something to look forward to and I, I like the idea of uh, multiple colors instead of just two because um, I used to be a quilter and the thing that I used to get bored with with quilting is after you do the first quilt block if all the other quilt blocks are the same there's really nothing to look forward to it's just very monotonous repetitive work and I like the idea of being challenged by different motifs and different colors and how it just kind of gives you uh, every new section gives you something different to uh, get excited about and that kind of makes you want to keep doing it so that you you go all the way until it's done so having something to look forward to to each new section is for me what keeps me engaged with these projects so anyways I just wanted to give an update on my stocking and uh, oh, also I wanted to say that California, where I live, just went into um, our second shutdown, complete shutdown. No one's allowed to gather at all beyond immediate family members, and um, o only essential workers are going to be able to go out now. And we're at a tipping point. We are Our ICU capacity is about 8% right now for the state, and... Um, that's the last I heard. So it's going to be really challenging for California. We're very worried that the hospital systems are going to start crashing. And so I am really hoping that everybody takes this very seriously. In my neighborhood so far, we're not seeing the level of seriousness that we saw in the spring. So um, I just, I just hope for everyone's sake that uh, we're going to have a lot more people take this a lot more seriously. So I hope I'll be able to continue um, putting out one new video each week until Christmas. And just wanted to give you guys an update on that. And thank you for everybody who might be watching these videos. Thank you to everybody who's been commenting. It's so sweet. And um, I, I'm watching Arnie and Carlos's videos every day. And I'm really enjoying the comment section in there. If you guys haven't taken a look at those, they're super, super fun and Christmassy. And there's a kind of a sense of a community growing around their daily updates. And um, it's it's making my, my month of Christmas really extra special. It's something I'm looking forward to every day. So I'm just kind of, for the first time, uh, doing something for Christmas on this channel. And I like how people have been doing these Christmas uh, vlog uh, video updates and I get to see how different people are celebrating Christmas traditions around the world and what kind of knitting projects people are working on and what's going on with the pandemic in their area of the world and how people are dealing with that. So anyways, it's just a really different, different Christmas this year. And um, I just, I hope that everybody's well, everybody's safe, everybody's doing fine and that we're all going to get through this together. So thank you so much for watching and I'm looking forward to the next quiet creative moment where I'll be able to share some more progress on my stocking. So thanks so much and I'll see you guys next time.